elevation will go up when that elevation goes up. Now watch this. I'm just going to pour from this bucket into that bucket. Now don't, don't watch me. What I want everybody to pay attention to is this right here. Watch this. So here we go. Is the level going up? Did it go up? This means that on, in all cases, the discharge head is a function of the suction head. We said that the pump adds energy to the liquid. <coughs> there is a certain amount of energy coming into the pump. The pump's going to add more, and the suction energy plus the pump's energy is the discharge energy. This is the importance of the suction pressure gauge on a pump. I drain it back into the other button. Now, now he's going to, I'll tell you what, uh, we go back up into the air. Go back up to shut off. There we go, shut off. Now, what is your, what is your job here? Are you one of the train mission project? Project. I, I'm going to turn you into a pump operator. Did you notice that we had more flow down here and, and less flow up here? So just turn this bucket here like so. All right. Now, give me a little bit of flow. All right. Now, as the process engineer, I can say, give me more flow, and you would do that. You're getting your more flow. Uh, give me more flow still. See, he's controlling the flow by controlling the elevation differential. Why give me less flow? And give me drops. And give me zero flow. There you go. Now give me drops again. All right, now give me twice as much work. And give me a mess. Give me more flow. Give me full blast flow. All right, uh, reduce the flow to half. All right, now reduce the flow to drops. All right, and now zero flow. And there you go. He's operating this pump by governing the elevation differential. So you can take, I have the elevation in my suction vessel. I have the elevation in my discharge vessel. So this is the elevation in the suction vessel. This is the elevation in my discharge vessel. If I, if I do that, I'm going to get more flow. If I do that, I'm going to get more flow. If I do that, I get less flow. If I do that, I get less flow. So if I increase the elevation differential, I get less flow. If I decrease the elevation differential, I will get more flow. This would be, this is why the car has a gas pedal and a brake pedal, so that you can control the speed of your car. So once again, give me drops. And then drops. All right, now give me twice as much flow. There you go. Give me full blast flow. All right, now shut it off. And there you go. He's operating the pump. He's operating this pump by the elevation differential across the system. All right, let's just, uh, all right. Now the, the now we have drained that vessel, and the, the shutoff head came down to here again. I'm going to raise the shutoff head now. But once again, watch this. Don't watch me. I'm going to add elevation down there, and the elevation up here is going to go up, which means that the pump pumps differential head, it means that the discharge head is a function of the suction head. All right, here goes the elevation rising in the suction vessel, and is it going up upstairs? The elevation rise up here? People, that is the importance of the suction pressure gauge. You've got to know the suction pressure gauge and then the differential pressure gauge, that'll tell you where your pump is on the curve. Give me uh, drops. All right, now give me uh, twice as much flow. Now look, he is operating his pump by controlling the elevation differential across the system. Give me uh, more flow. All right, give me more still. All right, open the floodgates and go full blast. Because I got a big order and I got a big order to fill. So fill it fast. That means drain it low. That means decrease the elevation differential. 
this is how you would operate a pump. All right, we're going to go back down. Okay, stop it. We'll go back up to the top. There you go. Now, <clears throat> another way that an operator can control his pump, and just leave it there. I'm going to put some more liquid back in this bucket. Another way that the operator can control the pump, and let me take it for just a second, is we've got a valve. We've got a control valve. So my thumb is a control valve. So I can do, I can open a control valve and I can get drops. I can get drops. I can get more and more and more and more. And I can go full blast or I can shut it off. I can go full blast and I can go to half flow. And I can go less flow. And I can get drops. And I can shut it off. And as we were doing that, I was moving the pump out on a curve and back and forth. Right now, we're back at shutoff head. And if I do that, we're, we've gone out about halfway out on the curve. And if I lower it down to here, we're going further out on the curve. Your pumps are constantly moving on their curves. The roadway constantly changes. It goes up, it goes down, it goes to the left, it goes to the right. The job of the operator of the car is to hold that car onto the pavement and into the right lane. Now, that's, uh, that's all right, I, I kind of wanted to do that. Let's go ahead and plug it in. Now I'm gonna get my little cup. I'm really gonna show you the importance of the suction pressure gauge. So let's, uh, Yeah. 
she is. She's cavitated. And here's the energy. Here's the energy. This is the importance of the suction pressure gauge on your pumps. Let me put that energy back into the system. Let's take that energy out of the system. Here's the energy. Here's the additional energy. You can make cavitation go away by bumping up the energy coming into the pump. You may have a butterfly valve on the suction pipe of a pump. And your pump might be in cavitation even if the butterfly valve is wide open. Now, you change that butterfly valve into a ball valve and the cavitation is likely to go away. Because a butterfly valve eats 10 or 20 times more energy compared to a ball valve. See, the butterfly valve works, at the, the, the valve is either shut or open, and even when the valve is wide open, you've still got the post and the wings of the butterfly are interfering with the fluid. In a ball valve, you've got a wide open hole. In a butterfly valve, you've got the, the components of the butterfly valve interfering with the flow. So a butterfly valve eats, and we're gonna see how much it eats. 10 to 20 times more energy compared to a ball valve. You could, uh, you could get more energy into the pump if you change six inch piping into eight inch piping. If you, if you reduce the number of elbows, if you move the pump closer to the tank that you're draining, see your hand raised. Yeah, I was just gonna say, you gotta make sure you have a full port ball valve though. Be sure that it's a full port ball valve, that's right. Now, or simply get more energy into the pump. There it is. So you guys, the operator controls whether the pump cavitates or not. <clears throat> Cavitation is not a mysterious, unexpected event. Let me show you something else. Now, what's happening is, uh, with this pump, there is liquid leaving the pump, and the liquid is leaving the pump faster than the liquid can come into the pump. So the liquid is leaving the pump faster than it can come in. So I'm gonna make the pump cavitate, <clears throat> I'm going to take the energy out of the system. There we go. Now here's my cavitation. Top of it. Be sure to have the cavitation here. There we go. Now I'm going to use my foot as a valve. I'm going to step on it here. I'm going to reduce the flow leaving the pump. Now, if I can reduce the flow leaving the pump, I can also reduce the pump's energy requirements on the suction side. So I'm just going to put some pressure here on my foot here, the heel. And I'm going to make the cavitation go away by pinching a discharge control valve. Thank you. 